Hi, I'm Sean. In spite of how urbanized Singapore has become, we still have pockets of primary and secondary forest that form the core of our natural spaces. In this episode, we'll explore the forests of Bukitima Nature Reserve. Come join me as we learn about the forests of our city in nature. The primeval vegetation of Singapore was largely lowland rainforest typical of the Asian tropics. These forests are characterized by the dominance of a group of trees called dipterocarps, and thus are called mixed dipterocarp forests. Mangrove forests line most of the coast, and freshwater swamp forests were found further inland, adjacent to the streams and rivers. However, by the early 1900s, most of this lowland dipterocarp forest had been cleared. This was done to make way for gambier and other plantations, of which rubber was the last of the large-scale plantation crops in Singapore. To protect Singapore's remaining primary forest patches, mostly as catchment forests for Singapore's central water reservoirs, the authorities ceased all agricultural activities in surrounding areas. This allowed the land to regenerate into secondary forests, and this explains the mix of primary and secondary forests that we see today. The forest floor is covered in leaf litter, which is home to insects and many other small organisms. Um, decomposers like fungi help release the nutrients in leaf litter back into the soil. Above this layer is the understory, where you can find many young trees, shrubs, and also climbers. Next, let's look at the canopy. The canopy forms when the crowns of trees grow densely and close together. The canopy blocks most of the sunlight from penetrating to the understory and forest floor. This is the blanket of green you see if you look out at a tall building at a forest. Actually, there is an incredibly diverse, fascinating ecosystem in the forest canopy that until recently was largely unknown and mostly inaccessible to humans. There are mammals, lizards, snakes, frogs, insects, plants, and many other creatures that rarely, if ever, come to the ground. The canopy is one of the last frontiers of the rainforest. Finally, the uppermost layer of the forest, the emergent layer. This is where tall trees emerge above the canopy. Trees here receive the most sunlight, but have to be able to tolerate the scorching temperatures and high winds. Bukatima Nature Reserve was the first forest reserve set up in Singapore. Established for nature conservation in 1883, today it houses one of the few remaining patches of primary forest left on the island. Here in Bukatima Nature Reserve, you can find 146 species of birds, 63 species of butterflies, 34 species of mammals, and 1,250 species of plants. Me and my colleagues have been studying a small area of the Bukatima forest about the size of four football pitches, and in this small area alone, there are over 300 tree species. Earlier, we said that the original forests that covered Singapore were of a type known as mixed dipterocarp forests. Well, what are dipterocarps? Dipterocarps refer to trees that are members of a plant family called the dipterocarpaceae. Di for two, pteron, wing, carpus, fruit, so that dipterocarpus means two-winged fruits. But other members of this family may have anywhere from two to five, or sometimes no wings at all, depending on the genus. What's really cool about them is the way they spin as they fall. Trees in the Dipterocarpaceae include those in the genera Shoria, Dipterocarpus, Hopia, and more. Here we have Shoria leprosula, also known as Maranti tembaga, or the copper-leafed Maranti, after the yellowish gold-colored leaves. Kumpasia, or Kumpas, is a tree, a magnificent tree, that can grow as tall as 60 meters. Compass timber is often used for things like flooring or for furniture making. 
One of the most common tree species in our Bucatima forest is this tree called Streblus elongatus. Now, can you guess which township in Singapore is named after this species? Well, its common name is Tempanis. The eastern township in Singapore was probably named after the Tempanis tree because there once was an abundance of Tempanis trees in that area. The perimeter of Bukitima Nature Reserve are forests that regenerated on former settlements and fields. Earlier we spoke about what secondary forests are, but how would we know we're actually in one? Let's take a walk down this trail, meet a few key species of secondary forests, and learn about their fascinating life histories. I'm now in a very typical mature secondary forest where you can find species such as oil fruit or Alstonia, Litsia, and silverback. These species are all said to be light demanding and they generally don't establish in the shade. So as you walk in these secondary forests, now and again you see a young sapling or seedling of a primary forest species, a sign that forest regeneration is slowly happening. Uh, here I am with a member of the genus Hanguana. Until recently, all Hanguana in Singapore were thought to belong to just a single species, but recent research have shown them to be five distinct species, some of them only known from Singapore, that is to say, endemic, like this one, Hanguana rubinia. It must have developed of its own accord in Singapore, becoming adapted to Singapore's environment. It's truly an honor to be able to share some of these very unique and rare plants with you today. Trees are wonderful, no two ways about it, and forests. But forests are not just a collection of trees, they are part of an intricate and fascinating network of living things. Frugivores act as seed dispersers by excreting seeds in their scat after consuming the fruits. By dispersing the seeds, the animals help the young trees grow farther away from their mother plant. This allows them to take root in other areas, reducing the competition for shared resources between members of the same species. While it might be relatively easy to find animal scat, it may not be that easy to spot an animal itself. Thus, we make use of camera traps to help us discover what animals live in the forest. As you can see, we have a wide variety of animals in our forests, ranging from Sunda pangolins to lesser mouse deer. Our forests are a priceless resource, home to a diverse range of plants and animals. Let's do our part to respect and protect our forests by having the proper etiquette when in our nature reserves. Take nothing but photographs, leave nothing but footprints, stay on designated trails, and when in the forest, keep the noise levels down. Map boards at the entrance to each of our nature reserves show you which trails you can take, as well as do's and don'ts of what to do when in our nature reserves. Want to learn more about the Bukitima Nature Reserve or about primary and secondary forests in other parts of Singapore? Look out for informative signboards placed at selected locations in the forest and be sure to visit the Bukitima Nature Reserve Visitor Center to learn more about our precious forests. You can also visit our other nature reserves and nature parks or even parks with forested areas in them such as West Coast Park or the Southern Ridges. There's so much to see after all, we're talking about one million trees, even more. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this mini tour of the Bukitima Nature Reserve and learning about just some of the many, many species that we have in our city in nature. Thank you, and we hope to see you again soon.